Hello, 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 dolls. It is I, Arvika DR, DJ Kitty Ruby, you know, your girl. And I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about this paper. And um, also, this is technically still a mermaid piece as well. I figured I would combine this and this um, review together a little bit since I did use this paper for this piece. Um, I've only used this pe this paper twice for our full on pieces. I've used it to swatch colors and markers of all kinds and yeah. And I do want to apologize for the lighting. I also want to apologize if there's any problem with my audio. I do have a new Snowball Blue microphone that I am currently using. Hello. <laughs> um, I'm going to try different places of putting the microphone to see if it just needs to be closer to me when I talk or what. Because I've recorded a few voiceovers and for one reason or another, the volume is still not very high. Uh, for some reason, I'm not quite sure why. Either I'm not talking loud enough, which I feel like I am because the needle moves very far. Um, so anyway so last year uh i bought myself a lot of different supplies in the year 2017 i think it was yeah i bought myself a lot of different art supplies and i bought myself copics i started my copic collection if you hear the bells it's just my ears they jingle a little bit there's FYI guys, okay? So don't start going, oh my god, what is that sound? It's just the kitty bells. I love them. I I do have a few other pairs of ears, but these are the ones that are not hurting my head at the moment. So anyway, so a while ago I bought this paper and I didn't do a review um, when I first got it because I wanted to use it a bit. Let me move some of my stuff out of the way. Um yeah, like I was saying, I wanted to use it a bit before giving my thoughts on the paper. Um, I'm not a big fan of doing reviews on things that I haven't actually used. I haven't touched them. I haven't put them through their paces. I've learned over the last the, the blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I've learned over the past few years that to do a decent review on a product. It's like not one of those like unboxing then trying things where you don't really try it very much. You just open it and try it right there on the spot. That's a first impression review. Um, I, I've done a few of those. I'm not saying they're a bad thing at all. But with certain products, I feel like you need to go more in depth. And especially if it's a medium that you're really going to be doing a lot of, you need to know about certain things. So for the longest time, I have been using mixed media paper and I'll show you what I used for my mix, what I do use for my mixed media. I have a bunch of different sizes of these mixed media, Canson, XL, books. They can be used with acrylic, watercolor, pen and pencil, and they're really good. Um, this is my newest one. It's pretty small. I uh, do have a medium one. I like it that's bigger than this one. I also use their watercolor paper. When it comes to marker paper, I've never really bought just strictly marker paper. I've gotten the mixed media paper. I have bristle board paper, but I've never gotten marker paper. And this is a made by Copic, which is by two marker products, 2OO or TOO Marker Products Inc. Um, they are the ones that you know make Copic products. It has the Copic thing right here. I bought it off Amazon. Um, it is called Manga Illustrator Paper. This is in pure white. 
Um, it even, don't mind the picture, I stashed stuff in this packaging. <laughs> but on the slip here, they even give you the little witch girl to color on your own. Um, if I was going to color her, I would actually transfer her onto a different piece of paper though because this is very slick backing. Like, you might not be able to tell from here. It looks just like regular paper here. At least to me it does in the footage. But it's actually really shiny and slick. And I've done, there it goes, there you can see how slick it is. Um, I've done artwork on stuff like this before when I first got like a really cool manga marker set back like a long time ago when I was still in my teens. When I was first really trying to get my hands on alcohol markers and manga illustration materials. And, um, but I never, you know, I never really gone out and bought actual paper. And it was during tax time and I was like, you know what, I can treat myself. It'll be Mother's Day slash birthday. Um, cause you know, as mothers and wives, sometimes we don't automatically get received gifts we buy ourselves our gifts so I thought you know what I really want to try these supplies and so I went for it um, it sat around I'll, I'll be honest with you guys it did sit around a lot um, multiple reasons uh, I was scared to use it they are big sheets of paper they are very thin I'm gonna get a clean that piece out for you guys Um, you get 60 paper, piece of paper, 30, you get 30, you get 30 pieces of paper in this little pack, like this package, it's just like this little cellophane plastic that's got itself adhesive right here. I have no problems with how it's packaged at all, okay? Not one bit. So this is the paper. You can, it's see-through basically. There's little grainy bits in there. Both sides look exactly the same. You put it down on the paper or on the thing here, on the board. Yeah, but they look exactly the same. So I never knew what side of the paper to use. Um, I did do some color swatches a long time ago. I don't have that paper. I don't know what happened to it. Somewhere in all my mess, as an artist, I'm not the neatest I try. I've been reorganizing and things. Um, but to do my latest piece, I did use the piece of the paper to swatch everything out before getting started on the piece. And as you can see, I did try marker out on both sides of the paper. Copic markers and my other alcoholic base markers. Uh, they don't look extremely bad on either side, but when you pull it out and you start, you use it to draw on, if you have to use a marker to verify which side is the right side, you're gonna have to end up cutting the paper from, cause you know, like, like I'm showing you that when you first put the marker down, you don't really see a problem on either side of the paper here. It's, this is the paper, this is this, like, So there is, you know, some marker swatch. This is a alcohol ink marker. It is a shuttle art marker. I got these for super cheap off Amazon. I love these. I got a 30 or 40 piece set. I think you can get up to an 80 set of these ones. Um, let me go ahead and just go ahead and actually grab a real Copic marker. 
another brown one. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the chisel. So that's just one side of the paper. We can flip it over. You know, it really does look quite the same on both sides. Like, so these are both al alcohol based markers. For some reason, though, these markers actually look out pretty decent when I do these swatches. Unlike the Copic, where you can see more of the buildup at the end here where no, it's not as noticeable with the darker color that I put up there with this marker um, same thing on the other side so they both look almost exactly identical I don't know if there's supposed to be one side that you're supposed to draw on or not but they seem feel almost exactly the same on both sides I can't tell you for sure if I feel a difference there might be a little bit more difference on this side, but so, like I'm saying, it's, you, you can't really tell much of a difference. Um, now, I've used outliner, you know, on it. You can't see much different with any of these. Like, I had no problem drawing with ink on these but as soon as you use your markers there comes a problem because it's just not the same Like now this is a Ranger distressed marker. It's just, you know, it's got two sides. It's got the fine and the brush. And like I I've had no problem using black ink, black markers on these at all. So now that I've shown you a bit of watching on both sides so that I'm pretty sure I'm not using the wrong side of the paper. I'm going to show you the two pieces that I did with this paper. One of them is with my shuttle art markers. I was using it to do a piece for the review for the shuttle art markers, which was hard in the end because I couldn't tell if it was the markers or the paper. So then I had to do another artwork on a different kind of paper with the markers just to verify that it it wasn't the markers that it was the paper and then I was like well maybe it's because I'm not using Copic markers so I drew out a piece and it did this piece on the paper so I'm going to go ahead and show you both pieces first I'm going to show you the piece that is not made with Copics. This is done with shuttle art markers. And like I said, you, you really can't tell a difference. The paper, it doesn't really bleed. Like, yes, you see the, the marker underneath, but it doesn't transfer onto anything. I will say that, that that's a good thing. Like you can see the color through it, but it's not actually leaking through where it's getting on anything else. So these, okay. something is like flying around my house. It's becoming summer, our windows are open, and I think there's a bug in here, but anyway, and I always have to keep looking at my drink because it doesn't have a lid on it. <laughs> anyway, so there's a bunch of these like really 
like the shaded areas like this gray brown tan uh, gray color here it's not very welly 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 <laughs> it's not very well done um and it looked like more of a bleed on the paper than actual shading and i did try to go over with a with colored pencil as well to kind of hopefully break down some of those very high differences between the marker and just like how this purple the purple right up here like that was just the marker building up on the paper um like i said i wasn't sure if it was the marker or the paper it could have been a combination of the two but again you know so this was the first piece that i did and i chose to do it on this paper for two reasons because i wanted to see how the paper was going to react and i wanted to try to do the best thing with alcohol based markers even though they were cheap you know you want to use them on paper that is meant for marker yes i do use my mixed media and i'm going to show you a few pieces that would have been done on mixed media on different kinds of mixed media paper and also some that was done on bristle board but first i want to show you the actual paper that we are reviewing here so here is the newest piece of artwork that i did this is done with copics um from far away you can't see all of the things that i am seeing like the footage doesn't show it as well as your eyes would pick it up like to you this might seem minimum but the ink just stays above the paper and it kind of dries tacky and when you are working on other areas your hand ends up sticking and which is another reason why i ended up using colored pencil on top of most of the marker was because anything that wasn't like done over again with a little tiny bit of color pencil was sticky and my hand was sticking to it and my hand was dry and so I knew it wasn't because I had something on my hand. Um, again here with trying to blend um, the tail here, like it, it's very sad because I really was trying to do a really good piece for Mermaid. Um, plus I've had this drawing ready to go for a while. Um, and I just feel let down by the quality of the paper itself. I don't understand why it's marketed for, it says right here, excellent for pen and ink, technical pens and markers, blank picture inside. It says it's acid free. I just, I just don't get it. It's, it's meant for you to use with markers. The markers, you know, you buy Copics, you want to try some other paper. I don't suggest the Manga Illustrator paper for two reasons. It comes in single, um, doesn't come in a book form so you're not sure what side is what. I've grabbed it from the front, laid it straight down onto the thing I've grabbed it from the back, flipped it over. I've tried it both ways. I don't know how to make it look any better. Um, and I will be, you will see these, the pictures on my Instagram. So you can head over there and scroll through and try to find them. Uh, obviously since this one is newer, it'll be up newer one. I can repost this one if you guys want me to. Um, I still love these pieces, don't get me wrong. These are very awesome creations. As you can tell, I love purple haired beauties. I, that was not planned. I had, didn't even know what I was going to be coloring this mermaid when I drew this mermaid. I didn't have a plan. It was just, I grabbed a whole bunch of colors and started swatching them and that's how it came out. So, so there we have it. There's, you know, two pieces, one with Copic, one with not Copic both done on the perfect manga illustrator paper and now i'm going to show you some other papers that have been done with marker some of them fully done some of them is just like one picture 
this paper is just flimsy paper from a really old sketchbook. I can't even remember the name of it, like the brand of it at all, but it's done in markers and the paper does really well. It bleeds just a tiny bit through the back. Um, and since it's in a book, you know exactly which side it is that you should draw on. And in most sketchbooks, you can actually draw on both sides without it being a problem. This piece is also done on the same, in the same sketchbook. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I think it is somewhere nearby. Mm, where are you? Here it is, here it is. Mm. Okay, so this is the sketchbook. This is pretty cheap. This is Pro Art Artist Tools and Supplies. It's actually really cheap. I've had this since 2011. Um, I doodle in it. Some are finished, some are not finished. But it pretty it holds up with a lot of different materials. It's not technically aimed to be mixed media. It's just, it was just called a sketchbook when I got it all those years ago. So a few of these pieces were done with marker, um, cheap markers. This one was done with cheap markers and a few Copics. The greens are Copics and the hair, the purple is Copics. Um, held up pretty well. This piece right here is also done with mainly Copics and a few cheaper markers. I think this one was done with the shuttle art markers. And again, this is just that, that same cheap paper. It holds up very well. There isn't that waxy buildup. Now this piece is done on Canson's mixed media paper. Unfortunately, I chose the wrong blue. It was dying. Um, and I really didn't want to keep adding more and more. I might go over and redo it, but for most of all, this piece looks really good. Um, the ones are here are Copic. Again, the purple and the pinks are Copic. The browns are Copic. And this is mixed media paper and it holds up very well. Yes, you can see through the marker, but it doesn't bleed through and really touch anything. Again, same Canson mixed media paper, completely saturated with mar with marker. No waxy buildup or shimmery shine. This is the same paper, but it has watercolor on it. Like the mixed media just works really good. These are marker and they were from that pro art sketchbook. And you know, the paper holds up really good. So I'm just confused on why a paper that is meant for markers doesn't hold up as well as marker or a paper that is basically aimed for whatever purpose you want to use it for. Um, mixed media, you could use all kinds of stuff with it. This is a completely marker one and it's done on the Canson mixed media. This is another completely saturated marker piece done on that really cheap paper. And like I said, there's not really a waxy buildup until you put colored pencil down. Um, I guess what I'm saying is like you can get good results with other kinds of paper and it's not as blotchy. This one's a little blotchy due to the fact that I didn't use the proper markers and the markers I had were dying. <laughs> Here is one that was done with Copics. Looks really good. It has good highlights, good shadowing. I'm still learning Copics, so not all of it is blended perfectly. But again, this is the Canson Mixed Media. And then I do have one that was done on Bristol Board paper. And this is done in Copics. And I love this, it's really cool. Um, was really learning how to blend and make layers and depth and shadow and all that stuff. And the bristle board, it's smooth on both sides, but it came in a pad form, so you knew exactly what side to use. And again, I feel like you could probably use both sides and it still looked pretty good. So bristle board, mixed media paper, I feel are better 
than the manga illustrator paper from Coke. Uh, so I'm, I, I give it like a five. I mean, you could use the paper, but if you're gonna use the paper to probably like add layers and you know, like really make a marker piece, if you know, you know, if you use markers, you know that you can't just lay one strip of color down in a, your piece. There's layers, there's shadows, there's, you know, there's more to it than that. And this paper just doesn't hold up to that. It's one layer of marker and it already starts to have a weird glossy sheen that's sticky. And yeah, I just, I don't get it. I'm sorry, Copic. I love your markers and your fine liners, but... I'm not a fan of the paper. I don't know why it is just not working for markers for me. I mean, it doesn't bleed. I layer to get really dark colors. I mean, it comes a little bit, but it doesn't actually come through. You know what I mean? But when you see these pieces in person, um, you can just see the marker residue and it's just not pretty. So there you have it. There is my review for these markers. Stick around for the speed paint of the mermaid piece. That will be shortly for this lovely mermaid here. And uh, keep those creative juices flowing, my dolls. And uh, I do appreciate everybody watching my videos and hanging out and uh, I plan on doing a lot more review videos, art videos, me videos, just you're, you're, I'm not going anywhere. Bug. I swear to God there was a bug. Um, I'm not going anywhere. I'm here. I'm going to be me. Um, and I appreciate all you dolls who have been watching and commenting and liking and Letting me know that you are liking my artwork, letting you, me know that you're liking my videos, and helping me improve my videos also. I deeply appreciate that. So yeah, here I go letting you continue with this video. Mm -hmm.